In the wake of a greed-induced global financial meltdown and the Cypriot government's plan to confiscate money from every citizen's bank account to tackle their own national debt, confidence in traditional banking systems is low. Step forward, Bitcoin. Created in the spirit of subversion by an anonymous developer nicknamed Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin is an electronic cash system based on an open source cryptographic protocol with no central authority. Dismissed by some economists as a craze akin to the Dutch tulip bubble of the 1600s, Bitcoin is part of a gradual technological shift in the way we think about money. In Zurich, these two believers have reaped a tidy profit from the Bitcoin and are confident of its future. In the Bitcoin system, we don't have to trust any particular person or any particular developer. We trust the code. You can see the code for yourself and hundreds of developers have already seen it and found that it works. In my opinion, this is a form of even greater confidence. Didn't they say that confidence is good but control is better? Personally, I like the idea that the flow of payments is free. It's like freedom of expression, it's fundamental. Everyone can keep his own possessions and move these possessions freely and stay clear of state intervention. Inflation is impossible because bitcoins, unlike cash, are capped at a finite 21 million coins. Complex, supposedly secret algorithms create and release bitcoins at their own discretion. Transactions are anonymous with no regulator and no accountability. Bitcoin can also be converted into the very same currencies it tangibly threatens. Those denominations controlled by governments as opposed to users. Nakamoto also devised software enabling people to mine their own Bitcoins, should their computers be strong enough to solve complex calculations. Calculations which would become progressively harder over time. As Bitcoin bolsters its reputation as a legitimate currency online, users can practically buy anything, from pizzas all the way to Alfa Romeos. A crash last month, when it lost 80% of its value in a day, has done nothing to dampen Bitcoin's repute. After all, a crash means it's just like other respectable currencies. Described by some as the Harlem Shake of currency and the new digital gold, the Bitcoin clearly poses some kind of challenge to centralized banking and to the guardians of fiat money. And whilst it won't knock off the dollar anytime soon and the euro can sleep easy, or at least easier, there are still those uncomfortable with its promise of financial freedom. We don't know where the purchasing power of this currency comes from or who is behind it. There is no bank, no monetary authority. And so it's a problem, because the whole stability of the economic system could be undermined. The other side to the Bitcoin is that its anonymity helps fuel a shadow economy connecting drug dealers, gamblers, dictators and anyone else keen to buy without being traced. At sites like Silk Road, the Amazon.com of illegality, Bitcoins can buy you a gun, a pound of heroin or a new identity. But whilst authorities are keen to focus on these uses of Bitcoin, the idea of a currency that cannot be debased to political order is probably much more of an immediate concern.